Okay, what's up YouTubers? Just wanted to show off the new dual alternator setup here. We've got them mounted with custom bracketry. Whip these up in about an hour. Um, this is a Dodge Ram 98.52 on it. This will also work for a 5.9 motor. Um, I believe any Dodge Ram will be able to mount their re or their alternator up about yay high and um, not have any interference on the hood. The front brackets on this is temporary. Um, I've got a friend making a custom one piece. Um, he's going to have a uh, basically water cut on a water jet and I'll leave about a half inch of uh, space between the alternators here. They'll just kind of wrap around the alternators. This will all be one unit, one piece. Um, so basically he's getting that fabbed up for me now and um, you know we'll give a half inch between each alternator for cooling purposes. Um, we've got two runs of new concepts. Uh, this is their one aught cable oxygen free copper all the way through um, and just to give you an idea how decent this wire is this is two gauge welding copper cable um, and it is fucking fat shit i mean there's my thumb it's pretty pretty heavy duty shit and you can see the set screws have actually torqued these to the same spec of work with a snap on the torque wrench you can see just how much higher the set screws on the new concepts is um, it is out of the block compared to the welding cable, uh, which means it's actually bigger than two off welding. Words to describe the wire? Oh god, I can't even know. I, I guess I would say it's fluffy, really fucking flexible. The jacket's pretty thin and soft, very easy. To work with. Um, but anyway, I've got these guys wired into my stock PCM. I had them hooked up to this 91102R, this transplant in here. Starter and electric. Here, let's hop in the truck so you guys can fucking actually hear me through the wind. Um, I, I got it from uh, Adam at Nation Starter and Electric, and told him I'd give him a shot out. Um, I told him how I was running the setup. I've got the dual, you know, alternators, snip and denso hairpin units, um, and the field wires are being driven off of um, that unit, both of them in parallel. Um, apparently, um, this unit cannot handle that because within the hour that I had it hooked up, it burned up. Um, and then no fault of mine for user error. It was nothing that I did. Um, well, actually, it was user error. Uh, as far as wiring it, I did everything correctly as far as assuming that it could handle two rotors of these Nip and Denso style alternators. I was wrong. Um, apparently, it draws too much current, so I ended up literally burning it up in less than an hour. Um, but while it was working, holy shit, these alternators were beast. Um, they had plenty, 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 plenty of reserve power at idle. Um, I couldn't barely drag the voltage down by a tenth. I had my voltage set point to 15 exactly. I couldn't get them to drop a tenth of a volt if I tried. It was pretty hard to do so. I had to find a couple of songs in particular where box rise was low and the frequency was just right to get the power out of the amp. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to do some voltage testing today. Um, we're going to go ahead and see what the stock PCM um, how how much power output we can get out of these alternators at a dead idle. And then I will chime back in in a week or two um, with the other regulator installed. I ordered it Friday, um, and Adam from Nation's uh, Starter and Electric was really cool about it. He said he's going to go ahead and send me a custom unit out to handle both of the rotors um, and um, make sure my alternator is delivering full power. And he's going to go ahead and take this one back and give me credit for it. So I'm basically paying a $50 difference which is a pretty fucking smoking deal and very cool of him to do so because it was actually my fault that it burned up. Um, I assumed they could handle more alternators than one off of YouTube videos because I saw other people doing it. It's like, well, if they can do it, I can do it, right? Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, but anyway, so I'm getting hooked up with Adam. Uh, thanks a lot for taking care of me. Um, and let's go ahead and do some voltage testing. So we're going to see what the stock PCM can do with these alternators. Um, you will see it drop pretty substantially, and that's not because alternators are weak. Um, it has everything to do with not providing maximum rotor current to drive those alternators to their full potential. So anybody with a high-power alternator, if you're using your stock PCM to regulate it, I highly suggest you bypass that and get an external regulator. Woke my shit up big time. So we're going to go ahead and do... Um, a voltage drop test with the truck running. Um, we're gonna play a song that has some very, very, very low box rise at the low note in the song. Um, I was pulling an upwards of 260 amps um, when that low note hits. Um, I've got my clamp meter that you can see there. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Go ahead and turn on the clamp meter, get it set to DC power. 
and let's see what this thing's got here. Um, should clamp around 260 amps at idle, and these things are hot too. Um, I wish I had an infrared temperature gauge so I could show you guys just how hot they are, but they're they're pretty hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up here. Fire the truck up. Got it set to DC, it's zeroed out. Okay, so we're seeing uh, about eight amps for the charging current for the time being right now while it's, everything's off. See, everything works just great. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the only Dodge with this particular motor that has a dual alternator setup that hasn't deleted their AC, um, their AC compressor. So I'm gonna try to get that one piece cut out soon and uh, provide kits for guys like us that need uh, some serious amperage. So. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and roll into the song here and uh, we'll see just how much current we've got at idle. I'll leave it at a dead, dead idle. As you can see, about 650 RPM, maybe 675 at the most. This fucking light would cooperate here, there we go. Yeah, about 650. So, all right, let's get it going. You can hear it actually drag the engine down when that low note kicks in because the alternators are literally dragging down a fucking V8 engine. This is a true RMS clamp, by the way, so we're definitely getting pretty accurate results, I would assume. So anyway, we've seen that uh, the voltage is dropping down to the mid 13s there, um, which is lower than I'd like it. Um, uh, average, you know, uh, on the low note, say somewhere around 250 amps, and that's the alternators are fully hot um, running at this time. Um, and that was those were at a dead idle. Um, I do have 46 millimeter pulleys on it. I think it works out to like a 3.9 to 1 ratio on the crank to alternator pulley. Um, so at 750 RPM, you know, the alternators are seeing. Oh, roughly somewhere around, I mean, uh, we could probably call it safely like 2,800 RPM or so, somewhere right around there, 2,800 RPM. Um, alternator RPM, which is, you know, pretty pretty fast at idle. Um, but anyway, so there's, there's a little bit of a demo, voltage demo for a minute so you guys can see what two high power alternators will do off of a stock PCM regulation off of a Dodge vehicle. Um, it has a hard time keeping up once the voltage starts sagging. It takes a couple seconds for it to, ca you know, to provide field current to make the alternators catch back up basically. Um, and it can't provide the full rotor current that these alternators are asking for to see full potential. Um, when I get my other unit in, We'll get it in for some testing, and you guys will see that I'll literally have a hard time budging at a tenth of a volt. I'm going to take everything I got to do that. And I am running at quarter ohm. I've got two ZV4s here. Saw it's 3500D with toolmaker inputs. Dualies in. All two-gauge cable going into it. Um, wired at a quarter with some eight-gauge wire just coming out of the port. Fucking lazy style there. Um, but anyway, for now, pretty happy with the dual alternator setup. Seems to be pretty beast, even even operating off the stock PCM. I don't have any voltage problems, you know, nothing's 
nothing sagging into the mid 12s like I was uh, previously with one alternator. Um, however, it makes me curious if having that transpo regulator on the other, the one alternator would have, you know, helped provide full, you know, current and full output of that alternator. So anyway, with that, I guess I'm out. Um, I'll post up uh, another vid uh, of the same type of testing as soon as that other regulator gets in and I'll drag out a hair dryer uh, and hook it up to my um, 1500 watt power inverter here and we'll see just how much current we can get the, out of these things at idle before and after the regulator installation. So, till then, we will see ya.